Now on Fox 13 News at 9, three people were stabbed at a track station in South Salt Lake. What we know about the juvenile suspect taken into custody. It was a cool day here across the state, but temperatures are on the rise, plus precipitation's on the rise. Where and when we could see some flash flooding this week. Clearing your criminal record, getting a degree, and the group that can help Utahns improve their lives. Being in the right place at the right time, a local hero here in Tooele being recognized for saving lives in the Ogden River. The Salt Lake Bees honoring the late great play by play announcer Steve Klauke here at Smith Ballpark, a place that he called home. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at 9 starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Evans and I'm Kelly Chapman. We are following several developing stories tonight. First, we have an update to breaking news we brought you during Fox 13 News Live at 5. A juvenile suspect is in custody after three people were stabbed at a track station in South Salt Lake. It happened at about 420 this afternoon at the Central Point tracks platform near 2100 South. UTA police say an officer in the parking lot patrolling the train station saw a fight break out on the south end of the platform. That fight left one adult and two juveniles, all related, with stab wounds. When the officer approached the scene, the suspect hopped on the train and took off. But other officers managed to take him into custody at another train station. It's a rarity. We, we actually have a really lo low crime rate for the volume of people that we move during the day. So um, people may not know it, but um, as, as a system, we move nearly 100,000 people daily. Um, and so when we have an incident like this, obviously we take it serious. Um, we respond quickly and we handle it appropriate. Police say this was an isolated incident. The three victims were taken to the hospital with non-life threatening injuries. A hazmat incident near I-15 in Mill Creek closed roads and prompted evacuations this afternoon. Unified Fire says they got the call at about noon from someone at a business near 210 West and 3900 South. UFA says there was a chemical reaction inside a 55 gallon barrel outside a business. That barrel was very hot and there was white smoke coming out of it. The business had to evacuate and so did the shop next door. Firefighters don't know what kind of chemical it was, but they do know there's a lot of chemicals used at businesses in this area. Working closely with the Salt Lake County Health Department, we have been told that once this chemical solidifies and is done, then it just turns into a solid waste, which the, the business owner can expose of. Luckily, no one was hurt or exposed. UTA also had to shut down the northbound and southbound tracks lines for a time. However, they are back open tonight. New at 9, the Justice Department announced its findings today that Utah is violating Americans with Disabilities Act. The DOJ says Utah has been unnecessarily segregating youth and adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities during the day instead of helping them find work and spend their days in their communities. They found the state relies on segregated settings such as sheltered workshops where people with disabilities have limited interaction with others without disabilities. What the DOJ found is that currently with the system of employment supports for the population in our state of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, they are not being given the opportunity to be um, really work in community based or uh, integrated settings. Um, and the state kind of is managing a system that is perpetuating that and that is unlawful under the ADA um, and they think the state needs to remedy that. Those in these workshops are often found performing tasks such as shredding paper, often for less than minimum wage. Last year, the DOJ issued guidance explaining how federal requirements applies to publicly funded employment and day services. The Utah Department of Health and Human Services shared this statement on the issue. The state remains committed to creating a support system where people with disabilities are integral parts of our communities and can thrive. Staff with DHHS worked with DOJ staff over the course of the investigation to provide any needed information. DHHS will continue to work with the DOJ on next steps. 
Tonight was the first home game for the Salt Lake Bee since their former announcer of nearly 30 years. Steve Klauke was hit and killed by a car eight days ago. There were plenty of tributes for the legendary voice of the Bees. Fox 13 sports reporter Andrea Urban shows us. Yesterday was the celebration of life for the late great play by play announcer Steve Klauke, but he was more than an announcer. He was a friend to all and today he was honored at Smith's ballpark, the place that he called home. You know, Steve was just synonymous with the bees and everything we're about, he's been about. This really is his home. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to sit in the radio booth tonight for a while with Tony just because I just it's how I want to feel. We pause for a moment of silence. Let us reflect on the countless memories he created and the profound impact he made on the broadcasting community and beyond. A radio booth that belonged to Steve Klauke for 29 years and tonight his initials SK are stenciled onto the field as well as on the players jerseys. The players will wear them on their uniforms their home uniform and the roads and every, everything we wear will have them on the rest of the year. He means a lot to this community. I talk about the bees but the people around the community and the, the memorial last night, the media people, the friends of sports period at universities, at, you know, Weber State, he was doing their games. And my goodness, I didn't realize he'd done almost 400 of their games. He is really a community asset. Yeah, he's, he's gonna be really, really missed. Thank you very much. How are you doing? Um, I'm okay, until we start to talk. You know, um, one of the, funnest things for me, I would actually sit in the radio booth with Steve a lot of nights because it was great because I could sit and watch the game mm. and listen to Steve instead of all the things that are going on in the stadium and that sort of stuff. I'm, I'm going to miss that. For me to have been able to enjoy uh, being part of his life, you know, as much as he was all of ours, mean, means an awful lot. Very, very fortunate for me to, uh, to have gotten to know him. I was lucky to know Steve and he was so supportive in my career and what I was doing in life and his tribute today was definitely something that he deserved. At Smith's Ballpark, Andrea Urban, Fox 13 Sports. Both Provo Police and Fire and Rescue are issuing a warning tonight urging you and your family to avoid all recreation along the Provo River until later in the summer. You may recall 10 days ago when a young Arizona boy fell into the river and died. Water right now in the river is running very fast and cold. Police said they're putting extra patrols along the river and encouraging everyone to stay at least 40 feet away from the riverbanks. You know, it's so enticing too because in the hot weather, it's so nice and cool to stick your little toes in there, but they, at that point, you're too close. Yeah, you, right. you just shouldn't get that close. And temperatures are going to be heating up this weekend, so I think a lot of people will be recreating heading into the next couple of days. But first, I wanted to show you a beautiful sunset. This is a live look right now from the Natural History Museum. Temperatures today, very comfortable. 65 degrees currently in Salt Lake, 64 for Ogden, 65 right now in Pro a lot less wind than we saw this time yesterday. Tomorrow morning we'll have a mostly cloudy start to your day, but driving no issues tomorrow. Commute cast early in the day looking good. Dry roads for tomorrow afternoon and notice those temperatures on the evening commute back into the 80s. So today we didn't get out of the 60s here in Salt Lake City. We're going to see increasing clouds into the overnight hours, mostly dry, but hey, we might be able to see a few raindrops here or there, but much better chances for precipitation moving in late in the week, Thursday night into Friday, especially across eastern and central Utah. For the rest of tonight, increasing clouds tomorrow morning, a somewhat cool start close to about 50 degrees as you wake up, but we're warming up throughout the day tomorrow. And then we're close to 100 degrees this weekend. As I mentioned, areas of heavy rainfall will be possible on Friday. We'll have more on that coming up. Allison, thanks so much. Tonight at Davis Technical College, students were presented with a first of its kind collaboration to help clear past criminal records. Fox 13 News reporter Emily Tenser was at tonight's presentation. Have you ever asked yourself, if you knew your record was not going to be a barrier, what industry would you want to work in? According to legal tech company Rasa, one in four Utahns have a criminal record, which gets in the way of employment opportunities. When people have done everything that a court has asked them to do, they deserve to move forward. 
That's why Rasa is partnering with Davis Technical College by offering a free expungement eligibility screening for current and former students. The software shows the felony and misdemeanor records and whether there's a chance students can get it cleared. That may sound funny to some people that somebody wouldn't remember what's on their criminal record. But it's actually really common. If they can't be expunged, resources will help students narrow down which studies and career path they can find success in. We want to develop their skills so that they have marketable skills in uh, the market that are in demand and lead to uh, you know, livable wages. In Kaysville, Emily Tenser, Fox 13 News, Utah. Caught on camera, a Lehigh couple's Tesla capturing a road rage incident over the weekend. What we've learned from authorities tonight. Plus, Roy police caught three reportedly vicious dogs after people were bit at a park yesterday. The consequences the dog's owners are facing. Have you heard of fox tails? They're dangerous to you and your dog. Details coming up. New BYU head basketball coach Kevin Young continues to bring in big time talent. I'll tell you about the latest four star recruit headed to BYU. An Idaho judge has issued an order to permanently seal 97 exhibits from the murder trial of Chad Daybell. This after the court received multiple requests from the media and authors wanting to publish information about the case. The order indicates some of those individuals were expressly requesting autopsy photos, which the jury saw. Judge Stephen Boyce says the move was made to balance the rights of the victims with the public's right to information from the case. The nearly 100 exhibits will be permanently sealed by the court upon final disposition. The man accused of killing Santa Quin Police Sergeant Bill Hoosier was back in court today. Michael Jane is facing several charges, including capital murder. There is some concern James' current attorney cannot handle a capital case. Today in court, the prosecution said they've already secured a new defense attorney for Jane. They just need to sign the contracts. But Jane, through his current attorney, objected to that, saying he doesn't want the Utah County Attorney's Office choosing who represents him at trial. The judge scheduled a new hearing for July 2nd. The founder of the former anti-human trafficking organization Exodus was denied bail today in her embezzlement case. Candace Rivera is accused of embezzling tens of thousands of dollars, which people donated to help fight human trafficking. During her court appearance, she waived her right to a preliminary hearing. An arraignment hearing has now been set for August 22nd. The judge did say an earlier date could be negotiated. Bluffdale's former fire chief, John Roberts, has pled guilty to misusing public funds. He's accused of falsifying government records to play Bluffdale firefighters for days they did not work. The estimated overpayment of wages is more than $128,000. In Summit County, a dump truck driver had to be rescued after they drove 200 feet off the road and down a ravine this morning. Happened just before 11 off Tollgate Canyon Road. Crews from North Summit and Park City had to cut the truck driver out of his cab. He was flown to a Salt Lake Valley uh, Trauma Center. His condition is unknown. In Weber County, a mountain biker was flown to a hospital in serious condition after crashing on Wheeler Creek Trailhead. This happened at about 5.30 yesterday. The Weber Fire District says the victim lost consciousness and sustained head and facial injuries. First responders, along with bystanders, worked together to help bring the mountain biker to safety. As we get closer to the 4th of July and Pioneer Day, Tooele County authorities are reminding you about fireworks restrictions. Tooele City posted a map on social media of this year's fireworks restrictions. The areas shaded in red mean fireworks are not allowed. Fireworks are also prohibited at all Tooele City parks. The city's fireworks show takes place on July 5th. We're talking about these big summer celebrations yeah. and summer officially starts this Thursday. You would never know by the way it felt today in Utah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, we've already had our first triple digit of the year and then today we only made it into the 60s here in Salt Lake today. This is well below average. At this point in June, we're typically into the mid 80s here in Salt Lake City. And tomorrow we're going to be returning much closer to normal. Let's go ahead though and start with a live look from downtown Salt Lake City from the Salt Lake Tribune camera. 
This is facing south right now. A beautiful evening here in Salt Lake City. 65 degrees. Wind is currently out of the north at 10 miles per hour. Main weather headlines today below average. Warming up for Wednesday. And then we're going to have a lot of heat this weekend. But the next big thing to get through is going to be quite a bit of precipitation moving in from the Gulf of Mexico into eastern Utah on Friday, potentially some areas of flash flooding concerns. But for tomorrow in Salt Lake, we're back into the 80s, 82 for a high warming up, but we're still going to be below average for tomorrow. And then as we look at future cast over the next couple of days, we'll see some clouds at times in northern Utah, but by Thursday evening down towards the four corners, we start to see some increasing precipitation. Then throughout the day into Friday, this is when we see our heaviest precipitation moving into the region, and we're likely going to see our biggest totals down into southwest Colorado, down towards Durango. But for us in eastern Utah and central Utah, I want you to stay weather aware on Friday. We have the possibility of seeing some pockets of very heavy precipitation in areas that are prone to flash flooding, slot canyons, storm dry washes, recent burn scars, all areas that we're going to want to stay weather aware heading into Friday for satellite and radar tonight. Increasing clouds as expected, making for a spectacular sunset tonight and we head into tomorrow morning and we're going to have our temperatures cool, but not as cold as it was this morning. It'll be close to about 50 degrees early tomorrow and then we're warming up tomorrow back into the 80s and we are close to 100 degrees for this weekend. Salt Lake City right now. Wow, the sunset keeps getting prettier and prettier. Live look from the Natural History Museum. Temperatures overnight here in Salt Lake, low 50s, about 4 a.m. through 6 a.m. By 8 o'clock in the morning, we are back close to 60 degrees here in Salt Lake City. So waking up on Wednesday morning, 40s and 50s here for most of the state, dropping into the 30s for areas like Park City. Definitely need a sweatshirt tomorrow morning. 64 for St. George early in the day. And then for the Wasatch Front tomorrow, our temperatures are going to be rising into the low 80s around 4 o'clock tomorrow. Air quality is moderate. UV index is very high for tomorrow. St. George, your chance of precipitation is going to be very low throughout the seven day forecast, and you've got a lot of heat tomorrow, mid 90s. We'll talk more about that chance of precipitation coming up later in the hour, but tomorrow we are going to be returning to the heat or at least starting to return to the heat. But tomorrow in St. George, upper 90s, 102 for Thursday, near 100 degrees on Friday, close to 105 to 110 heading into this weekend and early next week. For the Wasatch Front, we have low 80s tomorrow low 90s Thursday, Friday, and then we are close to 95 to 100 degrees starting on Saturday. We'll talk more about that increasing moisture heading up later in the hour. We'll be right back. In national news, the CEO of Boeing went before Congress today and apologized to the families of victims who died in two crashes on 737 MAX jetliners. The apology came during a Senate committee hearing where lawmakers grilled David Calhoun about Boeing safety concerns. 346 people were killed in two crashes, one in 2018, the other in 2019. This was Calhoun's first appearance before Congress since a piece of an Alaska Airlines plane blew out in January of this year. The Senate released a 204 page report this week with new allegations from a whistleblower who fears defective or improperly documented parts are going into Max jets. He claims Boeing hid the evidence during an FAA inspection. President Biden's immigration announcement was met with mixed reaction today. He unveiled an executive action to protect the undocumented spouses and children of U.S. citizens. The action would protect about 500,000 families and 50,000 children under the age of 21. The Trump campaign and fellow Republicans blasted the move. House Speaker Mike Johnson tweeted that President Biden is trying to play both sides by pretending to crack down at the border while granting amnesty to hundreds of thousands. Democrats are support supporting the president's actions. The Federal Trade Commission has referred a complaint against TikTok to the Department of Justice. The social media company is accused of violating children's safety laws. The complaint stems from a compliance review of TikTok. In 2019, TikTok agreed to a $5.7 million settlement over violations of the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. It was accused of illegally collecting the personal information of children. The DOJ will now investigate. 
A Tooele County Sheriff's deputy being honored tonight for his heroic actions while off duty. The story coming up. Three dogs loose in Arroy Park allegedly bit several people before being caught. What the owners of those dogs are facing now. Taxpayers may not be getting their money's worth when it comes to mineral extraction on the Great Salt Lake. Details of a big new audit. The hidden danger behind these fox tails. Details coming up. It's game five of the Stanley Cup final. Will the Panthers lift the cup? or will the Oilers extend it to another game? When that situation arises to act and not just stand there. I'm Fox 13 News reporter Mike Lee will be here in Tooele where a local hero is being recognized for saving lives in the Ogden River. I work in the jail so I take care of the inmates. James Pizanol is a deputy with the Tooele County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> But a month ago, he was far away from his usual workplace, spending time with his family by the Ogden River. That's when he was off duty and heard people crying out for help. It was pretty scary, though, when I when I made that first jump. I was like, I don't think I'm going to see my kids anymore, and it was pretty hard to jump. But I knew that guy that was in the water already wasn't going to see his kids, so I just mustered up the courage. That day, James saved a father and son from being swept away by the river. At Tuesday night's Tooele County Council meeting, Deputy James Pizanol was honored. For your unwavering commitment to protecting our citizens, even at the risk of your own life. With family and co-workers in the room <laughs> and a standing ovation from the audience. No candlelight vigils, nothing, because James did what needed to be done that day. His wife, Tiffany Galloway, was with James as he rescued that father and son from the river and has been by his side through it all. I'm proud of him. I am so proud of him. I, I of course, I made sure I asked his approval before I blew it up all over Facebook, but he needed, he needed this. With how high rivers are flowing across the state, he hopes this serves as a reminder to stay safe with fast moving water nearby. Stay away from the water. It happened so fast that, you know, if I wasn't there, they'd, they'd be gone. It swept them down like so fast. In Tooele, I am Mike Legal B, Fox 13 News, Utah. In Box Elder County, one man is dead after a crash on I-84 early this morning. It happened just before 6. UHP troopers say the man driving the Toyota Sequoia rolled down an embankment and died. Investigators learned the vehicle and man involved matched the description of a 22-year-old man who stole the vehicle in Weber County. The cause of the crash is under investigation. Lehigh police are investigating an apparent road rage incident caught on camera by a couple's Tesla. Yeah, this is crazy. Kyle Rummins and his wife were driving on Triumph Boulevard in Lehigh when Kyle says the driver of the truck behind them rammed into the back of their Tesla, pushing it around 100 feet. You're going to see it right here. All of this captured on video by the Tesla's rear camera. The video shows the driver of the truck then driving off while Kyle says he and his wife called 911. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Bart Smith with the Lehigh Police Department says because of the video from the Tesla, an officer was able to track down the truck driver and that driver was then cited. We've now started to look at other potential charges that range anywhere from assault to criminal mischief, felony type criminal mischief for the driver of the Ram vehicle. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't the first time he had done something like that and won't be the last. So that's why I kind of I, I hope that there's some justice, you know, some real uh, consequences for his actions. Mm, that's terrifying. Reflecting on Saturday's events, Kyle is happy he did not engage with the other driver, but says he would like to see charges. A new road rage law is going into effect on July 1st. It will make it easier for the state to track road rage incidents and increase penalties. The Utah Board of Pardons and Parole is starting the formal commutation process for death row inmate Tabaran Honey. He was sentenced to death in 1999 for the 1988 murder of his ex-girlfriend's mother. He is set to be executed by lethal injection on August 8th. The Board of Pardons and Parole is the commutation and pardon process for the state of Utah. So there is no additional recourse. 
State attorneys have until this Friday to respond to the commutation process, and then it could take up to two more weeks to decide whether a hearing will be granted. You'll be able to watch the commutation hearings through live streaming, like most court hearings. Experts say the state of Utah is making improvements in addressing sexual harassment, but it's still well above the national average in one category. These numbers come from the Utah Women in Leadership Project at Utah State University. The policy says overall sexual harassment numbers have dropped over the past two years, and they are in line with the national average of three to four criminal charges per 100,000 people. But UWLP says Utah's sex-based discrimination charges make up 38% of total complaints filed. That is the third worst in the country. The UWLP says more leadership development and intervention training can help workers avoid harassment. Roy police caught three vicious dogs after two people were bit at Emma Russell Park yesterday. A 60 year old man and a 25 year old woman were bitten. Police say the dogs were also aggressive toward children and attacked horses in a pasture across the street. Two of the dogs, a Border Collie mix and a Labrador mix, went to the Weber County Animal Shelter for quarantine. The dog the police shot with a bean bag an Australian Shepherd mix went to the animal hospital. There's no indication to believe that there's anything other than just the dogs being out and maybe not being the most friendly to strangers. The dog's owners were cited and faced misdemeanor charges. Coming up with the nice days, more of us are taking our dogs outside, which means you could come across foxtails how you can keep your dog safe and what to do if your furry friend gets injured. Taxpayers may not be getting their money's worth when it comes to mineral extraction on the Great Salt Lake. Is that without a lake, there is no success for anyone. I'm Ben Winslow on Utah's Capitol Hill. A tough new audit is out and it calls for changes to how the state tracks mineral extraction on the Great Salt Lake. We found that some mineral extraction operators are not always following administrative rule um, or the royalty calculations as set forth in their individual royalty agreements. And that has resulted in incorrect compensation to the state. An audit prepared for legislative leadership found mineral extraction companies are paying different amounts to the state for the same minerals. The state also isn't watching them closely. One example, sodium chloride. It's salt. They're not paying the same rate. And if we held administrative operators to the rate that's in administrative rule, that would result in an additional $832,000 in royalties to the state. Many companies also take deductions, as much as $112 million. Auditors raised questions of whether it's all justified. Yeah, Not necessarily that they couldn't deduct storage. It just probably needs to be better defined. Is that what you're saying? That may be allowable, but that's up to the division to determine. And they questioned whether the money the state is collecting is going to help the Great Salt Lake. The division takes these audit findings very seriously, and in fact, we've begun to implement uh, the recommendations. The Utah Division of Forestry, Fire, and State Lands, which oversees mineral extraction on the Great Salt Lake, requested the audit. A lot of the problems were blamed on prior administrations. There's some discrepancies and there's some things that we need to fix, and now those have been identified and we can get to work on what we need to do better. The Great Salt Lake dropped to its lowest level in recorded history in 2022. That set off alarm bells on Utah's Capitol Hill with state leaders. In your assessment, as, as you're directing this process, you feel you have the tools to actually collect the royalties that, needed to be, that need to be collected, yes or no? Yes. Okay, so moving forward, implementation for getting the royalties to the state funds is not going to be a problem. We can get there, um, but we've got the tools in place and, and we'll get this done for sure. Lawmakers have spent hundreds of millions of dollars and passed bills on water conservation aimed at protecting the lake, including bills rewriting rules on mineral extraction. The division's director doesn't believe companies were taking advantage of the state, but changes are coming. It's a different day on Great Salt Lake and everybody's come to that conclusion. And so we're actively looking at what can be done differently. A lot of the contracts the state has with mineral extraction companies are being renegotiated as a result of bills the legislature has passed and this audit 
so it is possible companies could be paying more in the future. On the Hill, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. Also on Utah's Capitol Hill tonight, political leaders were shown graphic video of the October 7th Hamas attack in Israel. What they saw was body camera video shot by Hamas. It was a closed door screening. Utah Senate President Stuart Adams says he put it on at the request of the Israeli Consul General to show what happened that day. As you can see, many were impacted by the video. Adam says he supports peace, but also stands with Israel. I feel for the families. I'm really concerned for the existing hostages. I never thought that human beings could be treated that way. It's something wrong. There's an element in the world that I don't understand. And I think I witnessed some of it. It's, uh, it's, it's beyond somber. It's, it, words can't explain what, we, what I just saw. Adam says there was no specific request from Israel in its war against Hamas, just support. Well, temperatures today in Salt Lake didn't make it out of the 60s. Tomorrow we're closer to normal, plus when our next heat wave arrives. Coming up in sports, the Bees honored the late Steve Klauke tonight at Swiss Ballpark. And the Cougars kept bringing in some top recruits in the country. I'll tell you about Cannon Ketchum coming up in sports. Okay, do you know what foxtails are? Heard of them. Yeah, sure. well, they, they actually pose quite a risk to you and your pet. Yeah, they can be very dangerous. Utah's weather authority meteorologist Chris Nunley shows us why you and your pet should avoid the weed. Have you heard of foxtails? If you're not from Utah, chances are you probably haven't. But some Utahns I've spoke with aren't familiar with this pesky weed either. I myself had not heard of foxtails until recently when I noticed my dog Cash had a wound on his paw. It was bothering him and it wouldn't heal. I took Cash to the vet and it was a suspected foxtail entry wound. My situation isn't unique. It's actually quite common for pet owners here in Utah. This morning of our like 10 appointments, six of them were suspected foxtails. It was just a, 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 short, a small day with six and that's just one clinic. The issue with foxtails and other weeds that have similar structure is that the seeds are shaped like an arrow that easily penetrates the skin of dogs and once they enter the dog they don't come out without a surgical intervention. Yeah, kind of a poker on one end, kind of a feather on the other side so it can only advance one direction and when it when it advances it can't back up so any orifice in their body is is you know is a, a bad place so you know eyes ears mouth nose throat um you can get down to the private parts in the back end of the dog so any any physical hole they can penetrate through but they can also attach to the hair itself because of the sticky nature of it and then penetrate the skin as well. If you notice your dog is acting strange, not letting you pet it like normal, licking an area or you observe a wound like I did, it is possible it could be a foxtail and the odds are even higher if you tend to recreate outdoors on trails this time of the year. If you notice these signs it is best to schedule an appointment with your veterinarian. If you catch one just as it's entering between the toes and you can still see the, the you know the, the feathery port of that you can pluck that out of there and then maybe treat that with some topical antiseptic or something like that but if, if you notice a wound you know a, a puncture wound in your dog's between your dog's toes and you know they're painful about it then that's when we have to get involved and actually use some medication foxtails are an invasive weed originating in eastern asia but they do particularly well here in utah especially after wet winters and springs and they're found all over the state not only are these weeds harmful to pets, they can completely alter or even destroy an ecosystem. They're all over the place. The, it is uh, cheatgrass, foxtail. These are some of the your, your more uh, uh, prolific, prolific invasive uh, grasses. Foxtails and similar weeds and grasses are not only found on trails and in open fields, but can be found in your yard or garden and are easy to identify. These plants are usually a type of weedy grass. Um, all, all these kind of fit into that same grass category. And so if you see grass coming up in uh, the areas of the yard where where maybe you have your flower beds uh, that is clearly not like the uh, Kentucky bluegrass you have, um, pull those before they go to seed because those are usually going to be the ones that have the problems. Luckily, if you spot these weeds in your yard, Mike says they're easy to remove due to the shallow root system. You can pluck or hoe them out of your yard. Also, adding a four inch layer of mulch in your flower bed can keep them out of that spot. These foxtails aren't only harmful to the ecosystem and to your furry loved ones, but they can be harmful to humans as well, entering through the feet as well as the hands and traveling through the body. Also, 
a quick update on my dog Cash. He's doing well and he had the foxtails removed from his paw. In Salt Lake City, Chris Nunley, Fox 13 News, Utah. We're happy to hear that Cash is doing well and we're happy to hear that the sunset is still stunning right now here in Salt Lake City. We will continue with sunset past 9 p.m. now for the next couple of weeks. 65 degrees currently in Salt Lake City with our wind out of the north at 10 miles per hour. Our temperatures right now here across the state in the 60s for much of Utah right now. A little bit cooler in a couple locations like Evanston at 52 right now, 57 for Bryce Canyon, but uh, we head into the next couple of hours. We have clouds moving into the state, but we have our next big weather maker that is going to be bringing some tropical moisture into eastern Utah late Thursday into Friday. We are expecting our heaviest precipitation to be near the Colorado border on Friday, so all eyes on that over the next couple of days. For tonight, we do have some increasing clouds here across the state that has made for a very beautiful sunset with our chance of precipitation starting to pop up a little bit on Friday for Ogden. Still just some isolated chances. Also some isolated chances possible on Sunday evening for Provo. Your chance of precipitation is going to be a little bit higher heading into Friday with widely scattered showers or thunderstorms and for Sunday Sunday night isolated showers are possible to wrap up the weekend and start next week for St. George isolated showers possible Friday. Sunday and Monday and looking at our chance of precipitation for Moab. Those chances really start to go up heading into Thursday with scattered chances Thursday, Thursday night by Friday widespread Friday night scattered Saturday isolated chances and potentially some lingering isolated chances late weekend into early next week for Moab. But let's talk about tomorrow morning here across the state Wednesday at 7 a.m. We're looking at temperatures in the 40s and low 50s here across Utah. We've got temperatures rising tomorrow into the 80s, so it's going to be about 10 degrees warmer than it was today, but this is still below average by just a little bit, and we are going to be back above average heading into this upcoming weekend. So let's talk about how much precipitation we could see here across the state heading into the next seven days in totality. So over the course of the next week, we could see areas of rain from about I-15 and further east with our heaviest precipitation coming down into eastern Utah, specifically into southwest Colorado down towards Durango. But Moab area down towards Blanding, that's where we could see areas close to three quarters of an inch to an inch of rain. 97 tomorrow in St. George, 102 on Thursday, back close to 105 this weekend. And for the Wasatch Front, low 80s tomorrow, low 90s Thursday, Friday, close to 95 to 100 degrees Saturday and Sunday. New BYU men's basketball coach Kevin Young continues to bring in big time talent. Four star recruit Cannon Catchings has signed a financial aid agreement to play for the Cougars. The six foot nine forward is a projected first round pick in the 2025 NBA draft. He's rated the number 40 overall prospect in the country, making him the highest rated recruit in program history. He committed to per Purdue following his sophomore year of high school, but reopened recruitment earlier this month with visits to Florida State and North Carolina State before picking BYU. He told ESPN that he and his family immediately clicked with the BYU coaching staff when they met last week. He knew right away it was the best fit for him. Catchings is the third four-star recruit and third member of the ESPN 100 to sign with the Cougars, along with Brody Kozlowski and Elijah Crawford, which has BYU with the 12th best recruiting class in the country. Catching is the second projected one-and-done first-round pick that will play for the Cougars next season, along with Russian Real Madrid player Igor Demon. Craig Smith filled his final assistant coaching position, adding David Evans as an assistant coach. Evans coached high school basketball over the last decade with stops at RSL Academy and Lone Peak, where he won a state championship in 2018 with the Knights. Game five of the Stanley Cup final, the Florida Panthers could win the Stanley Cup on their home ice with a win, but Connor McDavid was big for Edmonton Oilers, scored for a three nothing lead in the second period. Then watch McDavid skate through the Panthers defense and feed Corey Perry for the goal. That put the Oilers up four to one. The Panthers did rally back Oliver Ekman Larson with the goal to cut the lead to four three in the third period. But the Oilers put it away with an empty net goal after a great save there from Matthew Kachuk. McDavid with his second goal of the game. Edmonton won it 5-3. The Panthers lead the series 3-2. Smith Entertainment Group appoint, announced the appointment of Chris Armstrong as the president of hockey operations for the Utah Hockey Club. He'll be responsible for leading the new franchise. 
It's the first ever junior state amateur. Aiden Long with her semifinal match over Hayes and Peters. She won it 4-2 to advance to the finals. Well, she'll face Ashley Gentleman, who beat Adley Nelson 4-2. On the boys' side, Lincoln Markham won his semifinal 3-2 over Bridger Johnson. He faces Lance Lofton, who won his match 19 holes over Brock Porter. The finals are tomorrow. There was a moment of silence before the Bees took on Reno to honor the late Steve Popke tonight. Miguel Sano was at the plate with the bases loaded in the third inning, and in the words of Steve Klauke, it's up there, it's out there, it's gone. Grand slam home run, the Bees won the game 8-4 to four in honor of the longtime Bees broadcaster. Legendary baseball player Willie Mays died this afternoon at the age of 93. The Say Hey Kid was one of the greatest players of all time, playing mostly with the San Francisco Giants. Made 24 All-Star teams, won two NL MVP awards, 12 gold gloves, including that amazing catch, and he was sixth all-time in home runs with 660. A true legend, probably the best center fielder of all time. Yeah, I remember the over-the-shoulder basket yeah, catch. He'd do it like that. Yeah, incredible. Great player. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. We'll be right back. It is an artificial intelligence world, folks, and if you don't believe that, a candidate for mayor in Cheyenne, Wyoming, has a different kind of running mate. It's a customized chat GPT bot. <laughs> Look at the campaign sign. <laughs> that he says will actually run the city if he is elected. What? Vi yeah, Victor Miller calls his bot Virtual Integrated Citizen, or VIC for short. Miller says he himself is merely a, quote, meat avatar sure he, he so that's what the human is yeah a that meat a meat avatar, avatar. he plans to <laughs> handle the job ceremonial duties such okay. as ribbon cuttings while leaving the decision making to vic what will could go wrong will he charge vic like every night <laughs> it, 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 apparently ready, so. ready to, to govern election <laughs> yeah election officials aren't amused i am equally you know amazed and terrified by the <laughs> 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 is next